Patch notes are out for May 24th. Hi friends, I'm TTB. Welcome back to Mech Warrior Online News. It's been a couple of news videos, but this is the big kahuna. This is the latest info on the patch that is hitting on the 24th of May, which is only three days from now. And uh, as always, Tuesday is going to be patch day. Patch size is going to be one gigabyte. Oof, that is quite big for a Mech Warrior Online patch. We're getting the new crook. <laughs> the crook display. Display. Okay, I'm sorry, there's a typo in here. <laughs> Skill tree reconfigured, event mode queue, quirk pass 10, and new platinum packs. That's right, they also announced new platinum packs. So, let's have a look at what is happening in this patch. It's gonna be a big one. It's been a long time in the making, they say. Um, event queue will be in there, skill tree improvements. Those have been in the works for almost two years, okay. Uh, then there is also going to be the new event mode queue that we've tested on the PTS already, which was a lot of fun. Skill tree improvements, quirk display and information update. I'm go going to go over all of this, of course, in detail. Uh, new platinum collection next, quirk pass 10, weapon equipment and mech adjustments, and more. Coming in June, we will have the Crusader, the new quick play map that we've talked about earlier that is going to get some more last minute improvements and more. As with everything, these updates are subject to change in the future, especially balance changes, which is a good thing. Balance changes keep the game alive, shift the meta around, so that is really, really nice to see. Now, first up, the event mode queue. Launch event mode queue is here. This uh, gives PGI the ability to mix and match game modes, maps, mechs, and special modifiers. So, for example, on the public test server, what we had is we had a uh, 4v4 test for the, the uh, event queue, and... Um, they can literally change the stuff on the fly. So between match, they could literally change uh, change the modifiers between matches. So for example, they can say uh, only medium max, uh, only clan medium max, um, or they could uh, say one map only. They can say four v four, eight v eight, and you basically just have to select one of your mech max for your drop deck, and then you launch that. So it's taking a little bit of the elements from the faction play drop deck, but you can, will only drop with one mech in this case. Or hey, there we have an example. Um, which would not work because there's a general selected currently but allowed max over here is the crab and the rifleman it also shows you how much time you have and in this case um, what kind of modifiers there are going to be infinite ammo two times max speed two times faster weapon cooldowns third person only 100 more armor and the 45 minutes I guess is the time until the next uh event or the, the next modifier hits um we've really enjoyed the event queue uh, all those four before matches were really nice uh less serious chances to do some wacky builds um what we did not enjoy so much is the third person mode because the third person mode is a little bit wacky also event queue utilizes your quick play regional server settings so if you have for example uh, NA and Europe selected, then you're going to use uh, NA and Europe servers for the quick, uh, for the event queue. Then, skill tree improvements. We've touched upon this already in uh, the videos, but uh, skill tree has been improved. It has been decluttered. And uh, I'm going to click on this image right here, and that should, us, that should, that should let us showcase the whole tree, hopefully. I'm going to make it bigger. I just, that's not big enough. <laughs> It's not big enough! Let's make it bigger. Alright. This is not very sharp, unfortunately. But uh, basically, you will have your cooldown skills. All of the skill trees have been decluttered. They're still set up as firepower, as... Um, what the hell does this even say? I can't even tell, guys. This is... <laughs> oh. They should do these screenshots in higher resolution. Survival, it says survival. Okay. Mobility, of course, jump jets, uh, operations, and then um, auxiliary is over here. And I can't I can't read what this says. I'm sorry, this is it's it's just too blurry. In any case, um the skill points individually are still the same, but the way on how you skill your skill tree is going to be different. We're gonna make a full new guide on the new skill tree, so don't you worry about that, guys. I already have a skill tree guide up. It's been up for a year or two. And uh, we're going to make a full guide on the whole new skill tree and what the best nodes are to grab, especially what are the most common nodes that you should grab and the sequence that you should grab them in. 
So for example, over here you have your whole cooldown chain. So this is cooldown 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Over here you have got your range nodes. Here is uh, heat generation nodes. Um, these are your ballistic nodes, color-coded in purple now. These are your laser nodes, color-coded in yellow. These are your missile nodes in green. This is AMS buffing. This is skeletal density. Right here we have the skill nodes for armor improvements and so on. Um, most of the skill trees have been um, made so that you can just individually skill them. So for example, you don't have to take um, armor points now to take skeletal density. Or you don't have to take range nodes or whatnot to get to nodes that give you cooldown. You can just skill cooldown directly. There are a couple of nodes that will have prerequisites, and those will be, for example, uh, ECM and radar deprivation. These are part of some of the census trees. Um, they have been included in these skill trees because they are like, quite significant skills. Uh, radar deprivation, seismic, and um, enhanced ECM. So they have some prerequisites still. Um, most of the other crease have been completely decluttered. Quirk display and information update. And we've talked about this already in the preview videos, but just really quick if this is the first time you see this. The way that MWO used to display quirks was one huge list, not sorted, not color-coded at all, and really, really hard to work with. Uh, this is going to change, as you can see right here. Um, not only is it going to showcase you the quirks, it's also going to group them by the uh, skill that they are going to be influenced by. Um, quirks and skills right here, quirks just flat as a list up top here, and you'll be able to see at a glance, for example, what kind of firepower quirks your mech has, what kind of survival quirk your mech has, and so on, all grouped together, all displayed nicely. This is going to help so much in uh, selecting the weapons for your mech based on the quirks that your mech has. So this is going to be a really, going to be a really, really nice change. We've asked for this for so long, and it's finally here. And then we've got new Platinum Collection mechs. This is a new one. I was not aware that this was going to happen in. But we get two new Platinum Collections, an Inner Sphere Collection and a Clan Collection. The Inner Sphere is going to have the Spider, the Cicada. I should actually say the model. Spider 5 Delta, Cicada 3M, the Jäger mech Double D, and the King Crab Triple Zero. And the clan side is going to have the Incubus 4. That's the one that can run six EM medium lasers, for example, on the side trusses. The Vapor Eagle 3, the Hellfire Alpha, and the Kodiak. So if you ever wanted to have the Chrome Kodiak, well, Platinum, I call them Chrome, or the Chrome Crab, the Chrome Dome Crab, now you can do so. Both packs, of course, will come with uh, the usual goodies and the usual price tag. So definitely have a look at that. Should be interesting as well. Platinum Max uh, will come with a 30% Siebel boost as always, and the Platinum Paint Job will be able to be used on all variants uh, as before. So if you get the Platinum Mech Pack in a sphere, all your spiders will be able to run around shiny and chrome and make those people witness you as you jump in and die. Moving on to uh, the next bit, Quirk Pass and number 10. The Roughneck 1 Alpha, energy and missile cooldown get removed, instead it gets flat cooldown and weapon velocity. Roughneck 1 Bravo, ballistics and energy cooldown will be removed, 15% flat cooldown, 10% missile heat and velocity added, plus 20% ballistic velocity, nice. Roughneck 1 Charlie, 5% heat bonus, 10% weapon velocity, 10% cooldown and 10% SRM range, that is nice to see, I always like to see SRM range modifiers, I always just wish it was 20%, 10% is always so short, give it more, more! Roughneck 2 Alpha, cooldown and ballistic and missile removed, flat cooldown added, 10% energy range, 10% weapon velocity, the 3 Alpha gets pulse laser duration, 5%, 10% range and 10% energy heat. The Roughneck Reaver gets 10% Ultra Auto Cannon Heat, 20% Ultra Auto Cannon Velocity, and the Jam Chains bonus increased to a 30% uh, bonus from 25%. Um. <laughs> yeah, it always feels that it's like an increased Jam Chance instead of a decreased Jam Chance, but yeah. Um, this means it's 30% less likely to chair, right? Okay. The Roughneck Powerhouse, Energy Cooldown and Pulse Laser Cooldown have been removed. It gets 10% flat cooldown, 50% less crit chance receiving. That is nice. And 10% extra missile spread. Powerhouse, Roughneck, really nice for 
brawling uh, fun mech to play. And the lay released uh, in like early this year or late last year, Ravnik Bolt. Energy missile cool, uh, cooldown and uh, missile velocity removed. 10% flat cooldown, 10% flat weapon velocity, and 10% heat added. Uh, the bolt is really nice, for example, with a build, let's say, 4AC5, so this is going to help here as well. Adjustments to previous crud passes. Here we get to the uh, fine tuning. Flea 15 gets 30% radar derp and 15% laser duration. Flea 19 gets 5% extra speed, 15% range, 35% weapon velocity. And cooldown 40%. I mean, yeah, you're not gonna carry you're only gonna carry one weapon or two, right? So you're gonna have strong buffs. Fleet 20 gets four structure bonus on left arm and right arm, and 25% target info gathering speed. That is interesting. The flea uh, FA is getting 25% rated deprivation and 15% cooldown, so that's an increase of 10%. And the Romeo 5000 gets 20% uh, missile spread instead of 5%. That is a meaningful change. Nice. And 10% missile cooldown. Mistlings. Mistlings Prime right torso gets 5% missile heat. Uh, that is uh, nerfed down from 10%. The Spider Alpha gets extra 100% MRM ammo per ton and 100 meter seismic sensor. Arctic Wolf 1 heat dissipation removed. The Dervish Frenzy gets only 5% missile heat instead of 10% from before. Rifleman 3 Charlie, that is actually a buff, 15% ballistic cooldown reduction from 10%. And Rifleman 8 Delta Jump Jet Heat, 20% now bonus instead of 10%, so that's also a tiny buff, but I haven't really used the Rifleman 8 Delta with the Jump Jets, so that is a, a reason not to try it out, right? Helping us, helping a Bravo, um, instead of 8 gets extra 50% LBX, AC and Gauss ammo per ton bonus. And the Hellbringer Foxtrot gets 8 CT armor instead of 8 and 5 left torso and right torso armor to set of 8. Um, okay. Most people will not be using instead of 8 bonus on the Hellbringer anyways, but uh, if you wanted to, there you could. I always just find like, like armor bonuses, if they're that small, they don't really entice me to play a set of 8. But um, there are other bonuses as well, so it might be worth a second look. Just to try and see if there's something interesting you could buy, buy a build. Catapult A1 has gotten a nice buff. Um, that's actually fairly strong, that mech. And uh, they'll bring it down a little bit by reducing the missile heat bonus from 10% to 5%. That's just a tiny nerf. Sun Spider Manul, 5% PPC velocity in right torso from 10%. So they're taking down the, the PPC velocity a little bit because they're going to be buffing clan PPC velocity over the board, so they're taking down the speed bonus here a little bit. Nightjar, same thing, 25% was the set of 8 bonus for EAPPC, and they're taking it to 20% velocity bonus. Orion to see Alpha gets uh, less missile heat, minus 5% for minus 10%. The Skull gets 10% range removed. Uh, Skull can be a really, really nice sniper mech uh, with EAPPC and uh, Gauss Rifle, so they're removing a little bit of range from that thing. Super Wolf gets a set of 8 Bahas that Prime will have 5% heat, 15% weapon velocity, missile cooldown 15%, and machine gun rate of fire 50%. If you're going to be running like two machine guns on a Timber Wolf, now you have two and a half, basically. Uh, Timber Wolf Charlie, you have jam chance minus 40%, so up from minus 20. 30% ballistic velocity instead of 8, interesting, and 10% uh, energy cooldown. Timberwolf S gets, of course, jump jet buffs, minus 15% jump jet heat, uh, machine gun rate of fire, 5% missile heat, and 10% SRM range. Again, I would like to see a little bit bigger changes for than 10%. I would like to see 20% to have like really cool SRM ranges. And it would not break the game, in my opinion. It would, you would still be like in the 300, 350 meters or so, so it should be, would still be fine. Timberwolf Delta, set of 8 EPPC, minus 15%. 10% energy cooldown, minus 5% missile hit. Alpha gets a missile cooldown 25% from 10. 20% uh, missile velocity instead of 8 and minus 5% EPPC heat. And the warrant, 10% cooldown, 10% weapon velocity, 10% missile heat, and 30% ballistics velocity. The Zeus, the Zeus 6S gets 40% missile velocity, and the Zeus 9S gets 10% missile spread instead of 5 and 40% missile Velocity. Now, if only the Zeus's were actually a little bit tankier, they would be very interesting. But the awkward form of the Zeus combined with the uh, weapon system, 
um, mostly in the arms and the arms being huge targets. Um, I would like to see more tankiness on the Zeus overall. What much to see? PPC velocity 10% from 20%. Uh, what was going to be said about that? Warhawk Prime, same thing. Uh, a total decrease of ear PPC velocity by uh, 10% because left arm and right arm each have 5% less. High note to see, also 5% reduction for the ear PPC velocity, support over 3. Uh, PPC velocity also down 5%. Percent. This should also be ear PPC velocity. Supernova can't use normal PPCs. It's a plan mech. And the reason why they're bringing down the ear PPC bonuses a little bit is because they're doing weapon adjustments. Um, clan ear large lasers. The laser duration, that means the burn time uh, to do its damage, is going to be increased slightly from 1.25 to 1.35 seconds. Um, I've heard that people say, oh, yes, this is a really nice change on the one. The difference between 1.25 seconds and 1.35 seconds is going to be so small, um, you're not going to feel it much. The only pr pr uh, area where you'll feel it is on very fast, very nimble mechs, so um, it's going to be even harder to properly hit light mechs with this change, with ear larges. Um, with the bigger mechs, I don't think you will feel much of a difference. We're talking 0.1 seconds. We're talking 100 milliseconds. It's it's not that much. It's not that much. It's not going to make any, any big change here. Glenia PPC, projector velocity is increased by 150 meters per second. Um, so yeah, for unquirked mechs, they're going to be a tiny bit faster. That's fine, I guess. It's not a crazy change. Ballistic weapons changes. Machine guns and heavy machine guns. For machine guns in the Inner Sphere side and heavy machine guns, they are reducing critical damage multipliers across the board. For all the machine guns, by the way. Um, normal machine guns, 7.83 from 9.0. Heavy machine guns, 5.25 from 7.0. On the clan side, clan machine guns, 5.6 from 7.0. And clan heavy machine guns, 3.75 from 5.0. So across the board, critical damage multipliers are getting reduced on the machine guns and heavy machine guns. Light machine guns will stay the same as far as I see here. And uh, ammo proton on the clan machine guns is getting a 10% increase. Missile weapon changes. Now it gets interesting. SRMs and uh, clan SRMs are getting the heat reduced a little bit by, I would say, what is that, 10%? Looks about like a 10% heat de de deduction. That is nice. That is really nice. And that also makes the heat nerf on the Catapult A1 uh, not so bad because you're just going to get reduced all, all across the board. Equipment adjustments uh, in the Sphere Targeting Computers now match their clan counterparts in terms of laser beam range and pro projector velocity boosts. Uh, Targeting Computer Mark 7 now provides 11% boost to laser beam range from 10.5% up and 40% boost to projector velocity from 37.5%. Okay, then the heavy metal gets a, a bug fix where the jump jet reticle shake is now removed. Very nice. Target spotter. This is, by the way, this is a big one. This is a big one because I do it all the time. The target spotted marker lifetime is reduced to 5 seconds from 10 seconds. And target spotted command can now be issued every 5 seconds. So if you see something, you can spot it. It's going to be spotted for 5 seconds. And at that point, you can spot something again. Um, this is going to make it harder to keep track of mechs after they dip, it, uh, dip into cover and uh, go out of line of sight. Um, but you'll be able to use it a little bit more often now. And then a couple of bug fixes. Ultra AC 20, damage is now 20 instead of 19.998. Okay. The Mystics Prime Trial Mech now has the uh, Mystics Charlie side torso. Um, same thing for the Mystics Prime S. And the Hatamoto Chi 28TR now can equip right hand bolt ons despite lacking hands. No, they kick. <laughs> okay, I read that wrong. The other thing, completely the other way, the um, 28TR was able to equip right hand bolt ons, but doesn't have hands, so this has been fixed. It, can fixed. it cannot equip right hand bolt ons anymore. Okay, that is it. That is all the information about this upcoming patch on Tuesday. Let me know what you think, guys, in the comments down below if this video has been helpful to you.
Share with your friends, share with somebody who plays MW Online and um, is not aware of these upcoming changes. And if you'd like to support my full-time work, you can click the Join button right here to become a channel member on YouTube. You could hit the Super Thanks button or you can check out the various options in the video description below. This has been TTB wishing you a great day. I'll see you soon.